Frogs are an animal that you're probably familiar with, and a lot of us who are into nature have fond memories of catching these guys in local creeks or backyard ponds. However, something I bet you didn't know is that a ton of frogs around the world are actually poisonous, and though most of them are nothing to worry about for a human, some of them have the potential to be deadly. There is one family out there that takes this chemical defense to the extreme, the poison frogs. And it's these toxic creatures that are our target today. My name is Harrison, and this is Evan. We're twin brothers following our dream to share the true life stories of the animals we love to help you become an insider in the natural world. And the story of how poison frogs develop their unique defense mechanism is one of the most fascinating that you will ever hear. So we want to help you understand how it works and show you how it connects these frogs to the world around them in ways you wouldn't expect. Our mission has brought us to the tropical dry forests of western Ecuador in search of the little-known Pacific lowland poison frog, a species that is endemic to this region, meaning that it can't be found anywhere else on Earth. Most people have never even heard of these frogs before, but their hidden lives are too cool not to share. And once you've seen them, you will never think of frogs the same way again. Any luck? Nothing yet. The particular species of poison frog that's abundant in this area is really small, and unlike some of the other frogs in its genus, they're kind of dull color. They're mostly brown, and they blend in really well with the forest floor. They're really quick and pretty tough to catch. So basically, our only chance of spotting them is to shine around with our lights and wait for them to move, and that'll key us in that there's a frog nearby. There are a lot of mosquitoes around too, which makes the searching kind of tough, but we'll definitely get through it, and it'll be worth it if we can find one of these little poison frogs. Let's just keep scanning through here and see if we can find one. Our enthusiasm was high as we set out into the jungle, but we quickly realized that finding these tiny frogs in such a dense habitat was not going to be a walk in the park. Far from it, actually, since there were no trails in the area of forest we were exploring, and cutting our way through the undergrowth manually made for slow going. The tropical dry forest does not give up its secrets easily, and between the solid canopy and thick understory, there is no shortage of ways for our amphibian targets to disappear from view and escape into the safety of the vegetation. The forest was teeming with life, and despite not seeing any frogs yet, we were finding a lot of hints that they were around. The presence of these leafcutter ants was particularly encouraging since ants are one of their main food sources. Poison frogs prey on lots of small inverts like flies and mites, but ants are especially important to their diet because they play a surprising yet integral role in the frog's primary defense mechanism. Finding the ants was definitely a good sign, but we still had our work cut out for us to catch our target. And after looking for a while longer, we discovered that there was another problem with our search. Finding these poison frogs is proving to be very difficult. There are actually quite a few of them moving around in here, but as the sun is setting, darkness sets in so quickly under the canopy that it's already extremely dark in the forest here. So we're having to use our lights just to find the frogs, not to mention filming, but they are pretty abundant. So we should be able to turn one up and get it in hand if we're lucky. It had gotten so dark that spotting the frogs without our lights was nearly impossible, so we had to resort to using our filming lights because, honestly, we didn't expect the search to take as long as it did, especially since frog activity was picking up as the day went on. We started hearing them call all around us, and after a few close calls and several missed catches, I finally managed to get one of these little frogs in hand. Caught him? Yep. Nice. All right, I'll turn my light out here. All right, these guys are super quick, and if they get out of our hands, they disappear into the leaf litter right away. So I'm gonna be nice and gentle. Let me open my hand here. Take a look at this little guy. This is a Pacific lowland poison frog. Now the poison of this species has not actually been well studied. We don't know exactly what its composition is, but if it's anything like other members of their genus, Epipidobates, it could be pretty significant. It certainly wouldn't kill a human even if we were to eat this little frog, which I don't know why you would do, but for a small spider or snake, it could give them a really bad day or even be lethal. 
Now, despite the fact that these frogs are poisonous, they're not all bad. These guys are actually incredible caregivers. Now, the females lay their eggs right on the forest floor, and it's actually the males that are responsible for most of the parental care. What they'll do is they'll take each tadpole individually and carry it to a body of water where they can properly develop. So it takes a lot of effort for these frogs to actually care for their young, and yet they do it no trouble at all. They're such a fascinating little species. This is about as big as they'll get. So they do stay pretty small. It makes them super tricky to spot, but I'm really, really glad we finally got one of these guys in hand. We haven't seen poison frogs anywhere else that we've been in Ecuador. So it's really exciting to get to catch up with one of these frogs here in such an incredibly threatened habitat. Perhaps the most unique aspect of poison frog biology is their namesake defense mechanism, and the process of developing it is much more involved than you might think. Contrary to popular belief, poison frogs don't actually produce their own toxins. Rather, they get them from the food that they eat. These frogs have evolved to focus on particular prey items, such as some ants, for example, that produce alkaloids, a group of diverse and powerful chemicals that includes many potent toxins. The frogs store these alkaloids in special granular glands in their skin, and some species can bind them with other compounds that they do produce internally to create even more elaborate toxins. Once the poison is synthesized, they can release it at will when threatened by a predator. And this is a pretty effective defense, because depending on what species of poison frog we're talking about, the effects of the poison can range from stomach pain and indigestion to muscle spasms, paralysis, heart failure, or even death. The frogs also rely on their bright coloration to protect themselves, as these unmistakable patterns are what are known as aposematic, meaning that they serve as a warning signal to potential predators that the frogs are toxic and not worth the effort to try to eat. What's particularly interesting about this system is that because the poison of these frogs is derived from their food, populations of frogs that have access to different food sources can develop very different levels of toxicity not only between separate species, but even between unique populations of the same species. Given how little research there is about Pacific lowland poison frogs, we truly don't know how poisonous they can be. And even if we did, this specific population of frogs could have access to a particular food source that makes them more toxic than other members of the species. So there is a lot more research that we need to do to figure out just how poisonous these fascinating animals are. Seeing a poison frog in the dry forest, no less, was one of my biggest personal goals for this trip overall. The Pacific Coast poison frog only exists in a small portion of Western Ecuador. So what you are looking at is not only one of our personal favorite amphibians, but also a true icon of this habitat that only can be found here. If we don't preserve what little dry forest is left, this is one of the many species that will be completely lost forever. So to be able to see one here and now is extremely important and it is time to get this beautiful frog back off into the forest. So thank you very much, little one. This is definitely, there he goes, a huge bucket list item checked off. And we will let him get back to his daily activities. But let's go, we got a poison frog. Highlighting the value of the tropical dry forest was one of our biggest goals in Ecuador, as there is an incredible diversity of life stories that rely exclusively on this ecosystem and can't play out anywhere else. The story of the Pacific Coast poison frog, though not often told, is one of the region's most fascinating, and it was really cool to see how they've adapted to life in this unique environment. Though their defense mechanisms are impressive, they can't protect these frogs from their greatest threats, habitat destruction and global climate change. If you want to learn more about how amphibians are affected by these forces and what can be done to help them, check out this video where we break down the reality of the amphibian extinction crisis. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.